In this video, I'm going to show you how to drill a glass aquarium. So if you've seen any of my other videos, you know I drill all of my aquariums so that I can plumb them with overflows to make my automatic uh, drip irrigation water change system work flawlessly. Um, so this is going to be how I actually go about drilling all those aquariums, and I know I could easily talk about this topic for 10 to 15 minutes, but I'm going to try to make this video a little quicker. I might try to cut out some unnecessary stuff here and make this uh, hopefully under 10 minutes. So starting off, here's what you're going to need. You're going to need an aquarium, a drill, a diamond drill bit, some scrap wood, a towel, a cup of water, plumber putty, tape, a ruler, and the bulkhead that you're going to be putting in that drilled hole. So the aquarium needs to be non-tempered glass. Most manufacturers nowadays will advertise whether or not the glass is tempered or non-tempered. You want non-tempered, and I'm going to put some links in the video description on how you can tell um, if your existing aquarium is tempered or non-tempered glass. Non-tempered glass is what you want. Tempered glass, when drilled, will shatter. Non-tempered glass will not. You can drill it without it shattering uh, completely. Uh, it still could shatter if you do it the wrong way, so make sure you follow this video uh, precisely, but um, tempered glass will shatter every time. And for the diamond drill bit and the bulkhead, there's lots of different sizing options out there. Make sure you pick out the bulkhead that will best be suited for your needs and whatever water flow could be potentially going through it. And then there's charts out there that can tell you what drill bit size you need for the bulkhead that you have selected. So just make sure that you get the right size bulkhead that you need and then the right corresponding diamond drill bit. And I typically just buy the diamond drill bit sets that have multiple sizes so you can kind of figure out which one you need. And you're going to be able to test it beforehand. So you're going to use the diamond drill bit to cut a hole in the scrap piece of wood. And what we're using this hole for in this piece of wood is this is going to serve as our guide to kind of help keep our drill in place. So when I'm making this wooden template, I like to try to make sure that the hole I'm going to be drilling, the final hole in the glass aquarium, is going to be no less than one and a half inches away from the top and away from the side edge, away from any of the edges of the glass. I try to stay at least one and a half inches away. Um, so I, I keep that in mind when I'm making this wooden template, and I drill the hole in the wooden template accordingly so that the final hole I drill will be at least one and a half inches away from any edge. So once I have the wooden template made, I am going to get the aquarium ready here. Whatever side you're going to be drilling should be facing up towards the ceiling. I've laid down a towel inside the aquarium underneath where I'm going to be drilling to catch any water and to also hopefully catch the glass piece when it falls out if it does fall down so that it won't crack the other side of the aquarium because believe it or not, it can. I'm going to take the plumber putty. I'm going to roll it out so that it's a, a skinny little snake and then I'm going to make a ring around the uh, around the hole on the wooden template. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip that over so that that little plumber putty ring is going to be in between the wooden template and the glass. And that's going to create a little reservoir for the water so that the water doesn't really go anywhere. And we want to put water inside this little hole while we're drilling because we don't want the glass dust to be up in the air and get in our lungs. If we keep water in the hole, the water will mix with the glass dust as we're drilling and it won't go airborne as much, which is what we want. We want it to stay with the water. We don't want it to go uh, airborne in our lungs. So once we have the template in the place that we want it, we're also going to use some of our tape here to just tape it into place a little more to help us uh, just keep this template where we want it. You could use packing tape. You could use duct tape. It doesn't really matter. Um, and this, this wooden template is kind of sitting up a little bit. It's a little bit elevated off the glass because that, that plumber putty ring is sitting underneath it. And we're also going to use a little bit of that tape, and we're going to go tape underneath where we're drilling, and we're going to go directly over the area we're drilling, trying to cover it as much as possible with one band of tape. And the reason we do that is because once we fully drill through, sometimes that piece of tape that you just put underneath will hold the little glass disc and it will kind of just dangle there instead of falling down. Now, we do have the towel in place too to prevent it from uh, hitting the other side of the aquarium and catching it. This is just an extra little second fail safe so that when you fully drill through, it might not even fall down fully. It might just dangle there because a little bit of it is still attached to the tape. You probably will end up drilling through a lot of the tape too, but a little of the tape might remain and it might just kind of hang there instead of falling down. So. That's just a little step I like to do every time. 
So we have the cup of water. We're going to pour in just the tiniest bit of water here so that there's a little layer of water inside the hole. And it's okay if some of it leaks out, if it's not watertight. Um, throughout the drilling process, we kind of just want to try to keep some water in there. And then we're going to start drilling. And this is the most important step. Do not apply any pressure whatsoever. And it might sound weird. You might think to yourself, how am I supposed to drill through without applying pressure? It's going to take you a few minutes, but just let the weight of the drill do the work. You are just holding the drill and you're not lifting it. You're not pushing it down. You're just letting the weight of the drill sit on the glass while you're holding down the trigger on the drill and letting it just spin at full velocity while you're allowing gravity to do its thing. If you apply any pressure while you're drilling, there's a very high likelihood that your aquarium will crack. I've done it. A lot of great, uh, uh, you know, aquarium enthusiasts have done it. Um, and 99% of the time, the reason that the drilling process fails is because you applied too much pressure. Do not apply any pressure at all. Let the weight and gravity of the drill do the work and it will get through it. You might sit there for five minutes, um, but it will get through it. And you will likely need to lift up the drill maybe once a minute, once every minute and a half to add a little bit more water, and that's fine. You can go right back to it. You have the template, which will easily guide your drill bit back into the groove that it's supposed to be in. Um, so it's okay if you stop and add a little more water. Uh, you don't want there to be no water and to have the dust particles going into the air. But I cannot stress that enough. Do not apply any pressure. Let the weight of the drill do the work. So I'll fast forward to the end here when I drill fully through it and you'll you'll see your progress because you'll be able to see on the on the wooden template you'll be able to see your drill bits going further and further into the wooden template. Um, so you'll, you'll know that something's happening and if you're afraid that nothing's happening take out your drill bit you know when you're refilling the water and see how that groove looks and you'll see that there's a groove there you'll see that you're slowly drilling through it. Take your time with this because nothing is more frustrating than cracking an aquarium and having to go buy a new one, especially if you're working with an aquarium like this one, which is a 50-gallon low boy. That's going to be $125 to $225 that you're now um, out of because you're not going to be able to repair that aquarium. You're just going to need to go and buy a new one. So anyway, you've drilled fully through it. And now you can collect the uh, the circular disc from where you drilled. If it fell down or if it's still hanging there, you collect that. Um, and you're going to have to do a little cleanup now. You take the the, um, the wooden bracket off, the wooden template there, and you're going to take all the tape off, and you're going to remove the towel, and you're just going to start wiping up because when that water mixes with the glass, it makes a, uh, a watery, powdery uh, substance that kind of leaves a white residue. So you're going to start just wiping it all off, and even when you think you've wiped it all off, some of it probably went under the black frame, so here's a tip. If it gets under there, use something like a piece of paper or a playing card and just kind of run it under there a few times to get that dust out of there as well. So once you've fully cleaned everything up, you can now sit back and appreciate your work. Um, you know, you'll get little tiny little chippings around the edges uh, like you see here, and that's nothing major. Any good bulkhead will completely cover that no problem. Uh, so then you're going to add your bulkhead and make sure to just hand tighten the bulkhead. Don't really go too, too overboard because you don't want to crack the bulkhead or crack the glass somehow. So just give it a really good hand tighten and then you are good to go. You have successfully drilled an aquarium. And I managed to keep this video under 10 minutes, so I'm going to try to keep it that way. If you found this helpful in any way at all, hit that like button down below. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'd be happy to answer them. I know I kind of went through this quickly, but I can answer any questions you have in the comments. And if you're new to my channel and you want to see more great aquarium content just like this, hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.